Assalamu alaikum. Uh, here we are sitting in the Abdullah Quilia Mosque, which is the, the first mosque which was founded in the UK. It's got amazing history. Uh, it was opened just at the beginning of the month of Ramadan. Uh, and what's amazing about this place is that the local area doesn't have many Muslims living here. So the vast majority of the neighbours are people from, from other faith backgrounds. Uh, what started the project was when uh, I gave a khutbah and during the khutbah we were talking about the, the rights of neighbours and the rank of neighbours from an Islamic perspective. So during the khutbah we mentioned uh, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who would say that Jibreel would come to him and he would emphasise the importance of neighbours and the rank of neighbours until he thought that he would make them of the people who inherited from a person. So the rank of neighbours was emphasised. And then we looked at another one of the hadiths of the Prophet وسلم, when he was distributing meat as gifts to his neighbours. And he specifically told one of his companions to take some meat to his Jewish neighbour. So the whole idea from this project which we've done is to bring life back to one of the sunnahs which has been forgotten. I.e. the sunnah, the practice of giving gifts to our neighbours and especially to our non-Muslim neighbours. Uh, so the, the, the next step after this was uh, raising the funding, what was needed for this project. And what we did is we invited the local community to put some money into a pot so we could buy our local neighbours some gifts. The money was raised very, very quickly and we got to the point where we'd raised the money and people were trying to give us more money to participate in the project and we had to turn them away and tell them that we've, we've got everything already. So people within the community, they really took to it and they understood the importance uh, of giving gifts uh, to our neighbours. After we quickly raised uh, the funding needed is we went and we bought in bulk uh, some boxes of chocolates. In, in this particular case, uh, we got some really nice organic dark chocolates with posh ingredients and brown sugar instead of white sugar and all the rest of it. But, but these are the chocolates which we bought. They were perfect as well for the neighbours who didn't answer their doors or who were, were, were out. We could just put them in an envelope with the letter and post it through, uh, through the letterbox. So they'll, they'll, be, they, they'll be coming home to a, a pleasant surprise. Uh, the next step after that is getting the volunteers. Once again, we had uh, an amazing uh, uh, turnout of volunteers who wanted to come. Uh, what we said is they had to be good volunteers and we said they had to have good English, they had to have good manners and they had to be good looking uh, to make sure that they were the, the right people to, to go and, and knock on, on random people's doors which is effectively uh, what the project uh, is doing. Uh, the next step after that is that we delivered them, we made a plan, uh, we got an ordin ordinance survey map of the local area, we divided the whole area into different sections. We covered more than 100 houses with 100 gifts and a small letter uh, from the mosque itself. Uh, what we decided is that the volunteers wouldn't be pushy, uh, they wouldn't be talking too much about Islam, it would just be a genuine gift. Go and knock on the door, smile at the neighbour, give them a gift. And many neighbours were actually very surprised about this. Uh, one one neighbour even said, no, you don't get anything for nothing in this world. What's behind this? To which the volunteer said, no, it's honestly a genuine gift from us. They gave them the gift. The woman smiled and she looked shocked and amazed uh, and then uh, happily took that gift. فطرتك تنادي بصفاء مهما يحصل سامح واصفح أنت الرابح وغدا تهجر سامح أنت الرابح سامح واصفح واغفر وعفو قدرك يعلو قلبك يصفو سامح أنت الرابح وتعايش كي نرقى كي نصبح مجتمعا أقوى
So what we've had, what we've been able to do is break down barriers. There's been initial contact with our neighbours. Uh, hopefully they won't be as suspicious, they won't be as anxious when they see people uh, coming to the mosque to pray five times a day now. Uh, and it's a small step in, in the right direction to, to build uh, long-lasting bridges, inshallah. Uh, especially when we're in times which are as negative uh, as they are, when you can open any tabloid newspaper and see all these scary stories uh, about the Muslim community and about what Islam teaches and, and so forth. So it's, it's a much needed project. There's a huge need for a project like this, not just for our mosques and our Islamic centers, but also as individuals on a personal basis. We need to make sure that all our personal neighbors, the people who live in the areas around us likewise, uh, don't feel uh, threatened by us and they feel comfortable with us. And all we have to do is look at the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we can see time and time again the emphasis which the Prophet Muhammad put on neighbors. Even the ones who were hostile to him, he would visit them when they were sick, he would take them gifts, he'd be concerned for them and he would look after him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So inshallah, hopefully everybody is going to go away now, they're going to think about how they can do a similar project and how they can implement one of these lost sunnahs which is giving gifts to our non-Muslim neighbours and inshallah much good will, will, will come about from this. So any advice for the, for the uh, other people in different parts of the country? Gotta be friendly, haven't you? And that's the way I am. So you know, live on that level, isn't it?